Help protect us from racism and xenophobia by becoming an I Love Black People ambassador today. Join on ilovebeblackpeople.com. No matter where you are in the world, join us today and get access to the I Love Black People network. Special thanks to Banneker Communities. Greetings, amazing, dynamic, wonderful, I love black people, listeners. We appreciate you and all the things you do, making sure that we we stay on the air and make the loving of black people such a key part of our our activities and the way we view the world and and the the value that we all have and share. And it's just a, a pleasure every time we have opportunity to share together. And definitely appreciate everyone's feedback. Uh, those who are sending us emails, info at iloveblackpeople.com, super helpful, as well as our our, our phone number. You know, I, I normally don't you know you know talk about our phone number because you know how people are with uh, giving information. But some of the uh, responses we we received so are awesome, and I definitely want y'all to be able to touch it. So. Our, our phone number is 202-558-5143. 202-558-5143. Thank you so much for all your, your you know, again, encouragement. And we're going to kind of do an update for this uh, episode. So definitely appreciate uh, everyone. You know, this is an opportunity to kind of get up to speed about what's going on. As many of you know, uh, as co-founder of a startup, you know, I love Black people. You know, our focus is on protecting Black people from racism and Afrophobia, utilizing technology in a way that uses a model of the Green Book. And that was something that was created by Victor Green in the 1930s, that that lasted from the 1930s to the 1960s. And we use that as the premise because, again, we still want to make sure that, again, 1.5 billion people are of African descent. And I often talk to people, too, about, let's, you know, the, the issue of race. We're clear that race is a construct, something that's made up. It's not based in science. You know, when we talk about white supremacist ideology, that ideology is something that promotes one group of per- people over another group of people based on really bad science that doesn't exist. It's fictional. That being said, racism is real. So when we talk about I love black people, it's actually addressing real things that really happen to 1.5 billion people all over the world. And we changed the word xenophobia to Afrophobia. So in much of uh, you look at some of our social media on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, you'll see us reference xenophobia, which is a very you know big and all encompassing word. But what we've been talking about more recently is Afrophobia, kind of zeroing in on the issue at hand. And again, our focus is that because we understand that problem in ways that many other people don't. And we're leveraging technology to scale that solution so that it can be used as a safety net to help protect our people no matter where we are. You, you don't fight fire with fire, right? You fight fire with water. So we want to make sure as many uh, opportunities we have in many places that there may be that we understand there are deliberate things being done to harm our people. That means we have to do deliberate things to protect our people. So in our, uh, you know, best ways, and I'm I'm an engineer, our co-founder, Mr. Christopher Mopender is an engineer. So what we've been able to do is leverage our understanding of the world through a lens of our professions to come up with ways to make this a better place. And no matter what we do in work and, and do in, in life, we, we really think at I Love Black People that it's important that your work has impact on the people that you love. And to say I love uh, Black people every day feels good. It's an affirmation. It's something that we live, uh, all our staff, is focused on how can we improve and encourage our people in ways that haven't been done before. And so what we're doing is literally, you know, on the shoulders of our ancestors, people talk about what our ancestors did or didn't do. Ancestors in general, no matter who you're talking about, oftentimes when you hear this uh, in 
especially in cultures where they speak to ancestors. And a lot of times we we'll, you'll hear people like talk about ancestral worship and that's so terrible. And this to be clear, when you see statues of people all around the United States of dead people, those statues are people elevating their ancestors. Now that's not saying they're worship, worshiping them per se, but it is them actually showing their ancestors a level of gratitude for who and what they represented. And I say that to say that, so you don't have to make statues to your, to our ancestors, but one of the best ways that we pay our respects is to continue their legacy. They did the best they could to get here. So we don't believe in generational chauvinism. We don't say that there somehow was a, a one better generation than all the other generations. But we, what we do is we stand on their shoulders. We wouldn't be able to reach as far as we can now but for the sacrifices and the work that they did. And when we talk about that sacrifice, I think sometimes we get confused with the word uh, suffering and struggle. The struggle is eternal. When we're lifting weights, when we're learning new things, we're building, there's always a struggle in that. But suffering is not something that we should accept. And so often in our communities, we have even our loved ones, our parents saying, you know, things of how we should be able to endure and suffer. Now, that being said, I, I would only mention that telling people they must suffer probably disproportionately will benefit their oppressors. If you're telling people that they should suffer, you're really giving an oppressor the opportunity to use that as an opportunity to see how far they can push the suffering that they levy on a person. And so with that being said, the struggle is e eternal. The suffering is unacceptable. If you see a, a dog suffering, helping, if you see a, a plant suffering, helping, if you see a human being uh, suffering, we're not here to suffer. We're here to actually build and, and, you know, follow our calling. And that calling may require struggle. You know, it's, I'm guaranteeing it's probably going to require struggle. But it's not about us suffering. So just to kind of bring context to that and how oftentimes when we're talking about our ancestors, what they've gone through, they did struggle. The struggle is eternal and it continues to us as we continue to build on their legacy. But we're not here to suffer. And when we talk about I love black people, we're talking about eliminating the suffering that our people, not making it easier to suffer, but it's unacceptable. And what we're, we're our, our purpose in leveraging these platforms is actually to end the suffering. So when when you start looking at you know your own profession, you know I'll try to look at ways that your profession and, and talents can uniquely help in the suffering that our people face. And that suffering doesn't have to be you know someplace far away or just close by, but it can include both. I think one of the things that we sometimes don't do enough of. We look at our problems uh, that are on our block, which is important, on our street, that's important, in our cities. These are all like, you know, people often say politics is local, you know, even though if you, uh, you no know, politics, you know, you act local, but even if you think globally. And so the acting local doesn't limit your reach to just your city or the country you live in. We live in a world that's always been impacted globally it's not it's never been just about one location and i think sometimes we get so overwhelmed with what's happening in front of us of us and we don't see what's happening abroad that's actually related to that so much of the work we do as i love black people is making sure no matter where you are that you're not going to suffer the the brutality of racism and afrophobia and we appreciate all the support because we we're literally dependent on you. The only way that our platform works is through literally crowdsourcing the information from people from all walks of life, recommending black friendly places all over the world. And the eight categories are key to people activity that we're asking that we ask for the, the recommendations It's healthcare. It's, finance is legal places to to sleep accommodations uh food uh beauty 
child care and education, which is definitely is many folks want to make sure we, we protect our babies and beauty. And we say beauty, there's a psychological impact. You don't want to go someplace where when you come in, they see and want to treat your natural, beautiful self in a way that's harmful. So we look at those eight categories and we depend on crowdsourcing that information from so many of you and you've you've rose to the occasion. I think um, with the, the last update, I think we've been able to, you know, have maybe over 40 some thousand recommendations all over the world. And so those recommendations are very helpful, but it's not enough. We need more people. We're about to do a new um, revision to the web, to the, uh, our uh, app. We're in the process of updating it. So it's more user friendly, uh, it has a better interface and we're gonna need your feedback. You know, this process of developing uh, tools and resources digitally is great, but you, it's, it's nothing that you can do in a vacuum. It, the, the work that we're doing is only as good as the folks who benefit and utilize that work. And we know that there's so many ways that we can be helpful to each other. We've just created, we're just creating a tool to help in one particular way, not to limit the other opportunities that, that so many ways to, I was going to say skin a cat, but we're not you know trying to do anything with animals, but there's so many ways to do these things. But the way we've chosen with I Love Black People is to identify black friendly places where you will feel comfortable to share with other folks, uh, no matter where they are in the world. And I tell people, you know, I'm a member of you know a fraternity and went to historical black colleges, Tuskegee, Howard. It's one of those things where there's a, 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 a group of relationships uh, through all those uh, activities that I'm able to acquire so that when I'm in a situation, need help, I have access to people from all walks of life because of all these um, organizations and schools I've been to. But that shouldn't be limited. That, that shouldn't just be for me. You know, one of the things we, again, we talk about altruism, the unselfish concern for the welfare of others, making sure that, you know, again, my family's fine, but your family's not fine. We have to find a connection that says, hey, we need to be fine, not just me. And, you know, we oftentimes when you talk about this colonial and uh, capitalist model, it, it kind of focuses on the individual taking care of themselves and not the collective. Again, this is not a socialist plug, even though uh, there's nothing wrong with socialism or any of these other isms, but we can literally come up with better ways to interact with each other and utilizing the crowdsourcing for folks to share it and be able to you know, expand the network, a safety net, so that everyone can benefit it is a key part of what we do. But that's on that. Uh, another update that I think is important is we have the Black Blockchain Summit. It's that time of the year again. And we're having that at Howard University, historic, amazing, dynamic, the Mecca, Howard University on uh, September 21st to the 23rd. And we definitely love it, you know, just a shout out to our uh, uh, sponsors that have been with us for years. You know, uh, Perkins Cooley Law Firm has been very supportive of the work we do as it relates to technology. They're they're super awesome. Uh, Uphold, one of our old partners who definitely is great in the blockchain space. Jim and I, shout out to Cameron Winklevoss, you know, it's always been supportive of our activities as it relates to the Black Blockchain Summit. Uh, Isaiah, Lamar, Clev, you know, I, I'm Naja. There's so many people, Deidre, there's so many people that we don't do, I don't do enough and I'm gonna do better with thanking because the, the conference wouldn't happen without so many people who make it possible. And this year, as, as much as we do every year, it's really about community like I, I would definitely have no hesitation to say this is a, the people's conference out of all the conferences as it relates to the blockchain space i would say uh, the black blockchain summit is is really a people space where literally this technology is being related to how does it best serve the people not the people serving the technology and and i say that in a way that says that oftentimes people think technology is going to save somebody it's not 
technology has been used to harm and, and humiliate and, and do all kinds of devastating things to people. I think there's a movie out, Oppen Oppenheimer, and they talk about literally using uh, you know, the atomic bomb, which again, this is about energy. Uh, they, the use of that to kill innocent people in Japan, and they dropped two bombs, that's technology. They made how many bombs? Two bombs. And then you'll hear people say, oh, they did it to try to save and like save soldiers. Like they kill, they, I, I've been in Hiroshima or Hiroshima and uh, the bomb was dropped like eight or nine o'clock in the morning when people were like literally on their way to school and work. It was horrific. And it was dropped on a city, not a base, an army base, a military base. It was dropped on a city and again, you know, killed instantly so many people and then the the fallout from the radio at radioactivity killed additional people and still you know cancer and all these things so when we talk about the black blockchain summit the black is first in the name it's clear and that the the tech is not something that's going to save us we got to save ourselves one of the um is a, a good brother dr ball I think he, over in morgan state he, you know, again, a socialist, you know, really a big critic of uh, uh, Bitcoin, blockchain. And that's, and that's what we want. We want real critical analysis of what happens. And he definitely comes from a socialist background, which, again, you know, I'm clear that socialism is a, a gazillion times better than capitalism. Uh, I think both of them are both uh, old, antiquated type uh, ways of looking at the world. And we can actually come up with better ways. Uh, but communalism, uh, uh, socialism, uh, ability for us to work together and not be driven by, you know, monetary, uh, monetizing, or materializing or objectifying each other is, <laughs> of course, better. But again, it's, it's up to us to make this technology work. So our theme this year is peaceful solutions to violent world problems. And we talk about uh, how this technology that we uh, spent a lot of time in, in blockchain and Bitcoin, how oftentimes, you know, the exchange of value uh, that people use force, you know, they force like the sanctions that you've seen that this is the, the use of the dollar in a way that is, is it's, you know, akin to violence. Cause you're literally saying, if you don't do this or you do this, we're going to do this with this dollar. And what we say is that war is never the answer. It's the problem. And we need to have peaceful solutions to these violent things. There's no winner in Ukraine. Nothing but losers. All the, the killing that's gone, gone on for this year and a half, is, whenever it ends, there's no winner in that. That is definitely a fail in society. Whatever we are seeing in, in Ethiopia, where we've seen... Uh, Tigray region or in Sudan, uh, now what we see in Western Africa, you know, those are not wins. When we see devastation and, and killing and, and, and a scale that's much larger than Ukraine, but of course the, the media in, in their practicing of a white supremacist ideology will definitely put a, uh, a more focus on that as being the thing that, you know, people need to to, to understand is an issue. So we need to make sure that we can continue what we're doing with that is a, a, a part of what we, we need to do. So one of the key things that we need to uh, make a point of is it's important that we make as much of a solution out of this technology so that we can build on it in a way that actually serves people and not uh, exploit people. There was a recent thing in Kenya, a company called WorldCoin, and they were having uh, people uh, give up their biometric data using their eyes for some made up tokens and no one knew where the, the data was gonna go and how it was gonna be used. And this is technology. And this is ways that technology can be used to exploit our people. So we need to be 
aware of all these issues and be able to be the ones that actually determine how they're solved. So when we say peaceful solutions to violent world problems, there's too much violence in the world and not enough justice. So, you know, we're very much into the no justice, no peace movement and making sure that people who are involved in the issues that are facing our, our communities have the tools though. You know, we don't want to go into this century being like we did the last century as far as technology. We want to make sure all our people are aware of the technologies that are available. So that's important to us. So, you know, these are the issues that we're facing and we need to make sure that we're a part of as much of the solution as possible so that our people can benefit from it. And when we do that, these are the things that we can utilize to make sure that our people are empowered. And again, no one's gonna come save us, we gotta save ourselves. So it's so important as we talk about the issues that we're facing uh, with the Black Blockchain Summit that you understand that your participation allows you to have an opportunity to actually understand these issues and empower yourself. This is not, and our, the way we uh, organize our conference, you'll never see us trying to sell you something where we're trying to um, undermine your knowledge. We're trying to actually give you the knowledge where you can make decisions that you, for your own self. And we do have a treat. Of course we have a treat because we have some, some of the best speakers ever in this particular industry. And we have some so many of our community members that are just amazing that aren't seen enough that are amazing that that participate but we also for our closing reception uh, we know everyone we're talking about you know celebrating hip-hop 50 years and and we're clear that black folks are the are the creators of hip-hop creators of jazz the blues r b you know, reggae, you you name anything, we've leveraged our supernatural powers to literally spread that supernaturalness all over the world through literally uh, these, again, amazing uh, forms of expression. Uh, and so for us, and you know, again, I'm 54 generationally, so uh, being a hip hop gen generation, we're gonna celebrate that uh, as a part of our conference by having and uh, hosting uh, Dead Prez. Uh, M1 and Stick are gonna be at our conference and they're gonna, we're, and things work out. We got some, we're gonna do some little surprises for them and take care of that and, and honor them. And then we're also gonna make sure that everybody, uh, you know, who who knows is bigger than hip hop. And that's, that's one of their songs. So that's a little shout out, it's bigger than hip hop. We wanna make sure that everybody kind of gets that vibe and again showing how you know our significance in the world is is ubiquitous with everything that people anywhere they are you know you can hear and feel a sense of black what our contribution as black people globally has been for thousands of years we can't even talk you know again we talk about inventions we talk about the the, the fact that as a people we have primacy the first civilized folks in the world we're black people. So it's one of those things as part of this, this African diaspora being clear, you know, uh, of these contributions. There's no better way to celebrate, you know, hip hop to, to remind and understand where, where it started, how it started, who started it and why we started it. And that's the same thing when we start talking about these technologies. You know, we want to be the one that actually takes this and actually creates and build on what's been done to make sure that our communities all over the world benefit from it. So again, it's important that we have as many people know what's going on. If you are interested with the Black Blockchain Summit, please make sure you go to blackblockchainsummit.com. You can buy your tickets. We got three day tickets. Uh, we're probably gonna do, uh, as things get closer, you know, I think right now we still have the early bird. Uh, the ticket prices will go up. But again, we try to make sure our ticket prices are low. Uh, many of these conferences, it's just, they always talk about inclusiveness with this technology. But to go to a conference is like $600. Like, 
that's exclusive. That's an exclusive price. That's not an inclusive price. And then we're also having a virtual. You can see it's streaming. So just as much of this XM radio sh show is, is listened to all over the world. If you can't physically make it to Howard University on the 21st to the 23rd, you can check us out. Uh, go to the website, blackblockchainsummit.com. And uh, we have a, a streaming a streaming price where you actually can get the live stream and pay that for, for the streaming of it. So definitely check that out. Be a part of that. And it's still not late. If you have any folks that uh, still might want to participate and we have a we're going to have a hackathon with the students. Uh, we're going to have uh, a um, uh, a few pitch competitions. We might even have more than one. Right now, we're definitely looking at a pitch competition with Mac Ventures, an amazing uh, black-led uh, venture capitalist uh, uh, firm that does amazing work supporting talented, amazing uh, founders. And we're also again back with the the hackathon. We have some, you know, shout out to Tanner and a shout out to uh, Jeremiah Chapman for always making sure the the soundtrack of all the things that we're doing is is on point and keeps everything going. So and shout out to Sister Pascal who always is making things right for us and definitely appreciate the love she gives in uh, all our shows and making sure the titles are right and tight. So that being said, oh, and Sister Yvonne, Sister Yvonne, always making sure that we got all our, you know, materials out so that everybody can be aware of what's happening. And shout out to Brother Alex, who's in the background, but, you know, is is our lead developer and does all our, our great, amazing things. So I, as a shout out to everybody, anybody I miss, I love you. Charge it to my head, not to my heart. And as I always in this I am because we are. I wouldn't be me without you. So God bless you and keep you. Help protect us from racism and xenophobia by becoming an I Love Black People ambassador today. Join on iloveblackpeople.com. No matter where you are in the world, join us today and get access to the I Love Black People network. Special thanks to Banneker Communities.